God, I believe, is pouring out of his spirit on all flesh. Do you believe that? God is pouring out the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the outpouring, I believe, is where we sometimes get a bit messed up. And I believe that the purpose of the outpouring is to glorify Jesus Christ, is to bring him honor. See, Jesus said this. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. If you do this, I'll do that. And so acknowledging that, that God is God and that Jesus is Jesus. But I believe that the outpouring of the Spirit's main function is to glorify Jesus. Not so that we can build a large church or people get healed or anything else that you might be thinking of. I believe these are all byproducts of the outpouring, but they're not the focus. Psalm 103 tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. And forget not all of His benefits. There are benefits in us becoming Christians. There are benefits that God wants us to be able to receive. But I want to tell you that our main focus has to come again to worshipping Jesus Christ, to worshipping the King of kings and allowing Him to be Lord over all of our lives. The Holy Spirit always exalts Jesus. His precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Not to lift up a man or to lift up a denomination. But unfortunately, when there's a move of God, when God starts to do things, people rush to the man. People rush to the organization. People rush to whatever it is. But I don't believe for one minute that that's what God wants. It's not to lift up a denomination or a man. Paul said these words. He said, I must decrease that he will increase. And I believe that that's got to be our focus. So, Father, today we ask you that our focus would be on Jesus Christ. Our focus would be on you, what you're doing in our midst, what you're doing in our nation, what you're doing in the world today. Father, I pray that you'd help us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on you and Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. It's interesting uh, that they sang that song, God is Fighting for Us, Pushing Back the Strongholds. That's actually the title of my message this morning, that God is fighting for us. The Lord himself will go before you if you believe. God never changes. That's what we've got to focus on. God never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want to read some scriptures to you this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Amazing scriptures here. And it says here in verse 1, it says, Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go in to possess nations greater and mightier than yourself. I want you to understand, and, and I believe that God wants to bring an understanding to our thinking that we serve an amazing God, that God is all-powerful, He is almighty, there's nothing that can stand before Him, and He's the one that is going before us. He is the one that is fighting for us. Let me just read these scriptures again, and I suppose to this nation and, and to you and I today, because we all have battles, we all have things in front of us. There are all obstacles that the enemy would place in our hand. I said many years ago, and I've said it many times, that when I first got saved and I didn't understand, and because of insecurity and hurts and disappointments and different things in my life before I got saved, and, and just my whole makeup, was so insecure that when I got saved, I, I tried to protect myself. I, I, I didn't want to get involved. I didn't really want to expose myself. I, I, I really didn't want to be the one that was praying. I, I wouldn't pray. I wouldn't do anything in the public. I was so insecure and so fear, and I was, I was building walls around myself as to protect myself. And that's a natural thing. If somebody was to come at you, you, you automatically try to protect yourself. But you see, 
there was a thing that was coming against me because the enemy knew the weakness in my flesh. But you see, everything that we get, when the, to get to break free, you have to have a revelation from God. I can, what I'm saying today are just words. But unless you have a revelation, it won't change the way you are. And I had a revelation as I was building this wall of protection around myself that I realized and God showed me that the person that was helping me build, that was mixing the mortar, that was handing me the bricks, was Satan himself. He will help you build whatever you want to build that will separate you from God, separate you from your purpose, separate you from your plan. You see, before I was saved, before the foundations of this world, God had a plan for my life. And Satan wanted to do whatever he could to shut that plan down. And if we don't have a revelation and an understanding of almighty God, all-powerful God, who goes before us, well, we will balk and we will think it's impossible. God says all things are possible. Hear, O Israel, hear, kneel. You are to cross over the Jordan. You are to cross over the obstacles. You are to cross over the things that separate me from you, that you will, separate, you will cross over the things that separate you from becoming what I want you to become. Here it was a Jordan. Here it was a river. For me, it was insecurity. It was fear. It was all these other things. To go into and to dispossess it. You've got to dispossess it. Nations greater and mightier than yourself. Cities great and fortified up to heaven. A people great and tall, the descendants of the Anakin, whom you know, uh, uh, sorry, whom you know and of whom you heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak? Therefore, understand. God wants to give us a spirit of understanding. He wants to open our thinking. He wants to open our minds. Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is He who, crosses, uh, who goes over before you as a consuming fire. I, I want to paint a picture this morning that God wants to go before you. Understand this that we're not alone, that God wants to fight for us. It's the Lord, uh, He is God. It's He who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said. There's some things that God wants us to drive out from our own personalities, from our own life, from things that, that get around us, that, that cripple us, that pull us down. And God has got a purpose and a plan in all this. It says here in chapter 5, towards the end of it, the Lord your God drives them out from before you and that He may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. See, God has got a plan. He has already spoken it. He has already spoken it. Those words are spoken. They're out there. And God wants to do whatever He can to stop the enemy's plan. He wants to destroy it. He wants to pull it down. But also, He wants to fulfill every promise that He has spoken he wants to, friend, I want to tell you that God has given us precious promises. And God wants to fulfill them. But if we have a wrong mindset, I want to tell you it's very, very hard for God to do what He wants to do. God will fulfill His word, which He swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We need to understand how awesome, how powerful, 
how mighty is our God. If there's nothing else that you get from this meeting today, I pray that you understand how awesome and how powerful and how mighty is our God. And this one is fighting for you, for us. He's fighting for me today. God will go before you, causing you to have victory. Mike on Sunday night said something that began to stir inside of me. He said that when God, in the beginning, right in the verse, very first chapter of the book, it says, and that God said, let there be light. And immediately there was a change. Light came. And he spoke these words and he said, light, that word that he spoke, let there be light. I don't realize and I've never read in the Bible anywhere in the Bible where God says, stop. <laughs> he said, let there be light. And, and Mike was saying that that light is still going out there into the darkness because, you see, we live in a world where there is no end. And right now, that light, that word that God spoke way, 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 way back, I don't know how many years, but as he spoke those words, that light is still penetrating the darkness and still pushing back the darkness and creating new things and doing whatever He wants to do because He's God. And if we can start to comprehend and understand how amazing the magnitude and the, the magnificence, the all-powerfulness of God that we perhaps might somehow or other start to believe that he can look after us. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to destroy your enemies. He wants to triumph over them. He wants to, uh, I believe, do amazing things. I want you to have a quick look with me in Exodus. Exodus chapter 7. And God here, I believe, is speaking about us, who we are. Because Moses was a man. And so when God's speaking to Moses, he might as well be speaking to us. And I, I believe that Moses was the type of Christ or the type of the church. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. Just start to think about that for a little while. I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of this land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, but Pharaoh will not heed. There are some things that God wanted to do. He said he will not heed you so that I may lay my hands on Egypt. God wanted to settle a score against the enemies of the people, the enemies of God, and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. It goes on, verse 5, it says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand. It goes on in verse 7, it says, And Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron 83 years, 83 years old when he spoke to Pharaoh. You see, when Moses spoke, and Aaron spoke, and when you speak the word of the Lord, when you speak what God says, it's like God speaking. I don't want to underestimate God I'm not trying to underestimate God or anything like that and bring Him down to our level, but I want to take us up to His level where He wants to take us. And He spoke these words and He said this, He said, When you spoke, I was like God to Pharaoh. Because you see, when you speak the word of the Lord, when you speak God's word, it has got the same power in it that God invested in it from the very beginning. Because God never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
His word is powerful. Do you believe that today? It is an amazing word. And I want to encourage us. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And Moses and Aaron did so just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. Friend, if we can as a people listen to what God says, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying, do what God has commanded us to do. I believe that there are many, many weak and sick in the church because they don't hinder what God says. Friend, He says, forgive. How many people know that that's not easy at times? Am I Robinson Crusoe on this island? How many people know that it's hard sometimes when you've been hurt and when you've been ripped off and when you've been broken and, and particularly when you're going, when you're suffering as a result of that? Words, they say, are cheap. It's easy to say things. But you see, unless we have a revelation, unless we have an understanding, we, won't, we might mouth some things, but our hearts aren't really in it. And I believe that God wants by His Spirit, He wants us to give us a revelation so that right down deep on the inside, we, we can, even as Jesus did, but we can say, my God, my God, you know I'm hurting, but my God, I want to forgive them. I, I want to, I want to, I want to. And I believe that God will begin to help us. You believe that today? Forgive. Another thing that God, I believe that we're, God commands us to do is love. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Love, 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 love. It's not easy to love some people. And the Bible also says to give and it shall be given unto you. You see, we, we live in a, in, a, in a church history. And, and I don't want to focus on this too much, but where, where the church has taken on a whole new dimension or, 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 or facade, if I can say it like that. It's all about comfort and it's all about this and it's all about that. And I like comfort, amen. I got an electric chair. But if it becomes a focus and we forget what God today wants to do in His church, he wants it to be a house of prayer. He wants it to be a place where we feed the hungry and where we look after people and do certain things. But many today in the modern church only know God as God. I hope you can understand what I'm saying here. He's God. They so, sometimes they say, the big fella or this, or that, but is God. But you see, God doesn't want you just to know Him as God. He wants you to know Him as Lord. He wants you to know Him intimately. He wants you to know Him as Lord of all. Most importantly, He wants us to know Him as Lord. Surrender to his, to his will. I want you just to read, I want to read this to you today. And, and David, every time I look at this scripture, I remember, I don't know how many years ago, you preaching this, this passage. It would have been a hundred years ago, I think. But as, you, as I remember that day, as you opened that scripture up, I had a revelation. Something from that scripture jumped out at me that even today I still remember. I still remember David preaching it. And it's in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The 
the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Jesus comes to touch us in, a, in, a, in a, what I believe in an amazing way. God is fighting for us. God, the Lord of all, wants to go before us to destroy our enemies, which I want you to know are his enemies. To drive them out, not to play with them, not to fool with them. There are many byproducts of sin that's come into the world, abortion, murder, drugs, rape, abuse. Why does God want to drive them out? Because God himself hates them. I'm just surprised at how many times in the Bible that God, it refers that God hated it. In Exodus 3 verse 7, the Lord said, I have seen the oppression. I have heard the cry. I will come down to deliver them. I've got quite a few scriptures that I want to read today and I want you to have a look with me in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. I believe God is calling the people back to himself. It says in verse 6 of 55, Isaiah 55, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And he will abundantly pardon. He goes on in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things which I sent it. And you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of thorns shall come up cypress trees. Instead of briars shall come up myrtle trees. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign. Shall not be cut off. You know, I believe when we're talking about God pouring out His Spirit, we're talking about God doing things. God Almighty going before us, God speaking to us saying, come on, I want you to cross over that thing. Don't linger on the other side. Don't say it's impossible. Don't say I can't do it. But speak the word because when you speak my word, when you speak what I say to speak, then it's going to be like thunder in the enemy's ear. He will not be able to resist it. He will not be able to stop. But I want to say this to us as a people. Don't fight against the pull of the Spirit. I am totally confident that God is striving with man. But the Bible says He will not always strive with man. Don't fight against the pull. You know what? You most probably could put up a very, very good argument. Why, why, why? But I want to tell you, don't pull against the pull. Don't fight against the pull of the Spirit. 
The Word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you believe that today? Let me read another, some more scriptures to you. Is it all right to read the Bible? It's a good book, you know. It's got some good stuff in it. How many people believe it's got some good stuff in it? Jeremiah 29. Some of these things really touched my heart this week. I started with one page and I now got about 20. <laughs> 29 verse 11. Nancy come in and she said, what are you doing? You're still getting some more. <laughs> you went too long last week, Neil. <laughs> verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. That gave me a shock. You know, God's thinking about me. God's thinking about me. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Don't fight against the pull of the Spirit. Don't, don't resist what God wants to do in your heart. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God has thoughts about me. He's thinking about me. He watches me. I want to release you from the captivity. I want to release you from wrong thinking. God's thoughts towards you are freedom and deliverance. He wants to set you free. I want to encourage you with some, some words here. In 2 Samuel 23, 11 and 12, the Bible says that there was a man there. The Philistines had come down and they... They came to take a, a, a patch of ground that was full of lintels. And this man, this one man, this one man, he said, I am not going to run anymore. I'm going to listen to what God wants to say to me. And it says that he stood in the middle of that lintel patch. And the Bible said that that day the Lord brought about a great victory. You know, I want to say this. It doesn't matter the odds. It doesn't matter how many. It says that he killed many of those Philistines that came down to take that little patch. But it says there that when he stood, and you've got to catch this, when you stand, that's when God can fight for you. When you make a stand, I will not allow that thing to destroy my life. I will not allow that intimidation. I will not allow that shyness. I will not allow that whatever happened to me back there. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve some stuff that happened to me, but it happened to me. And I'm not going to allow that to stop me from crossing over the barriers and the walls and the fences that are in front of me. You've got to step over it and you've got to go in. And that's when God can work with you. That's when God can fight for you. If you're running from it, he can't really help you. But when you make a stand and you start to understand that the greater one is in within us and the mighty Holy Spirit is in, in us, and He's given us a word that is all powerful. It's an amazing word. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is powerful that when you speak that word, when you speak that word which God has given to you, it is like God Himself speaking that word. And friend, I want to tell you, He's more interested in destroying the enemies than you and I could ever imagine. Then... Egypt will know that I am God. I will harden their hearts 
because I've got something I need to settle with that bunch. They're not just going to get away with it. <laughs> How many people know the devil's not going to get away with it? The Lord brought about a great victory. That's what the Lord wants to do for you and for me. If I will stand my ground, don't give up, and you will know great victory. I want you to have a look with me. And we all know these so much, but 2 Kings chapter 6. Anybody getting anything out of this? I'm having fun here because I want to tell you, friend, I hate the devil. I hate what he's doing to people. I hate the enemy. Oh, I'm in one king's. No wonder it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so another day it will, but not today. God is so good. This is, this is a story that blows my mind. In verse 24 it says, And it happened after this that Benadad king of Syria gathered his armies and went up and besieged Samaria. Besieged means that they totally surrounded it, that they totally cut off any provision, anything that they can do. You know that that's the enemy's plan, is to besiege the church, to cut off its supply. And you know what? The church is going down that road where they say, we will not speak in tongues now, or we will not do this now, we will not, because people are more important than what God says. If you're listening to the bleating of the sheep, you'll, get, you'll go astray. You'll be led the wrong way. And here it is that this... Enemy comes down and besieged. Has anybody here ever felt that you're besieged? There's no way of escape. There's no way out. Hopelessness gets around your life. Can you imagine these people in this city? They're in a city, but all of a sudden there's just armies all around them. They've got their tents. They've got their fires going. They've got everything going. They've got food cooking out there. And you've come to a place in your life where you're eating donkey's heads. A lot of people in churches are feeding off donkeys' heads. <laughs> Sorry. Cab, doves, droppings. Can't imagine it. People are starving. The woman there boils her baby. The king says, what can I do? And then he, wants to, he goes after the man of God and he wants to go and pull him down. You see, when you're besieged and when you're, when you're in that circumstance, you don't need somebody to come up necessarily, although you do, but you don't. <laughs> Shaka bundi. You don't need somebody coming up and putting their arm around and saying, oh, brother, you're so, oh, yes. It's so sad and so, and pouring pity on you. You need somebody to slap you up the side of the head and say, stand up like a man. <laughs> now, I know a lot of people don't like that. Because I've been there when, when, when I haven't had a revelation and the person that said it didn't have much love. <laughs> Just get over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've you got to catch what I'm saying here. We need, we need in that time to hear the word of the Lord. Can I say that again? At that time, you don't need somebody just to pour pity on you you need to hear the word of the Lord. You need to hear what God's got to say. And when you hear it and when you stand up and you speak it out, I ought to tell you something happens in the realm of the Spirit. 
It penetrates, it goes in, and it starts to war for you. It starts to pull down, it starts to break down. Amazing. Besieged, no way of escape. Then in 2, in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, the man of God stands up and says, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. It may not have seen, might, mightn't have even made sense. Tomorrow, barley and flour will be sold at the gate. It, it, it mightn't have even sounded, I, I, I want a better word than that. <laughs> But what he was saying really is tomorrow the famine, what was besieging you will be no more. That's what God spoke to Moses when the, when the Egyptians were coming after him. And it looked impossible. There they were, all fury and wrath ready to come. Moses, by lifting up the rod, the, the sea opens up and they walk through. And then Pharaoh comes after them again, charging, screaming, yelling. But God said to him, he said, I want you to know this. The enemy that you see today, you will see no more. And I want to tell you this, friends. We've got to understand that this enemy that we're fighting, perhaps, this thing that, that comes against you, this thing that, that keeps rising its ugly head and pulling you down and smashing you. You don't want to put a band-aid on it. You don't want to put a ribbon on it. You just don't want to shoo it off for a couple of minutes. You need to hear the word of the Lord today that says, this enemy that is attacking you, you will see no more. And get a revelation of that. And tell the filthy mongrel thing to get off your back. God is not looking for as I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He's looking for an army of people that will begin to stand up. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And, and we know there that there are four leprous men. I've shut my Bible, but I've got to open it up again <laughs> because I want to read this to you. I want to read this to you. Amen? Say, read it to me, Neil. Read it to me. <laughs> oh, shakabundi. Know that God spoke these words, and I, and I honestly believe that when we stand and we speak and when, we, when the prophetic utterances come and the Word of God comes forth like thunder, when the, when the anointing's on, the, on that prophetic gift, when the power of God starts manifesting itself. Friend, I've got to believe like this because if I don't believe like this, I ought to tell you it's not worth even going on. Lest the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. And I want God, I want God, I want to see God's name glorified. I want to see Jesus on His throne, Hallelujah. I love what David said there. He saw uh, the, the cross become the, the, the throne. Hallelujah. What looked so insignificant become something that was so fantastic. And here they are, the, the, the leprous men going on. The enemy that you saw, you'll see no more. And there's four leprous men. And we know the story why I sit we here till we die and all that sort of stuff. There arose at twilight in verse 5 to, to go to the camp of the Syrians. And that when they'd come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, there was no one there. What I wanted to say, and I got sidetracked a little bit there. I believe that when the prophetic and when the word of God goes forth, when we speak something there that you, you know when you've got the, the Holy Ghost on you. You, you know when, when, when you're standing for something and you're just making a declaration. And you're, you're there. I want to tell you, I believe that something happens in the realm of the Spirit. 
that activates and motivates the heavenlies, that does something that, that becomes what I want to say supernatural, that causes God to be able to do things. And these four leprous men, as a result of a man standing up and speaking that word, tomorrow, this is what's going to happen. Shoo. Now these four leprous men start walking toward the Syrian camp. And listen to what it says. And I want you to understand this. If we can, somehow or other, understand that, that God wants to go before us, you're not on your own. Not one of us here, most of you, that doesn't have to fight some battles. Because that's what the enemy does. But if you can understand that, that God is, 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 and as you're walking towards that thing, as you're walking towards that whatever it might be, I know mine, you both, you've got to identify yours. As you walk towards it, and as you're walking towards it, know that God is going before you. And that when you get there to your surprise, you find that the enemy has been defeated. He's already gone. It says, for the Lord, everybody say, the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight, and they left their camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. You see, it's a principle in God. Why sit we here till we die? Rise up. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up, you mighty warriors. Rise up and make declarations. That enemy that came against you, you will see no more if you can stand your ground. God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness, pushing back the strongholds. Amen. You must give God something to work with. Because God wants to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that you could imagine or think. God just doesn't want to put a Band-Aid on the circumstances and situations. One of the great things that I found out is that God, God, God will fight for us. And that God hates those things more than you and I can ever imagine. And He wants to destroy the enemy. If you're prepared to make a stand, if you're prepared to make a stand and you want somebody to agree with you, I would love to agree with you today. The Bible is full of stories of impossible situations. But God, everybody say, but God, but God, but God. I know, and I can feel it in my heart right now, that there are people right now in this place, and in a sense, you've quit, you've given up. You know that that guy that stood in the lintel patch, that had happened for years. Year after year after year that had happened. And that's why the children of Israel, when they saw, the, saw them coming down, they just fled. But one day, made a stand. This could be your day. This could be your day to make that stand. Amen. We're just going to sing that song. And if you want somebody to agree with you today and 
If you're prepared to make that stand, why don't you come? Let's all stand to our feet.